Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we're back from the brand new video and hey, look at us, ladies and gentlemen, we're here on a Tuesday which must mean something is about to happen or might happen, ladies and gentlemen, as we're obviously here to discuss the first delicious Rangers rumour of the 2023-4 rebuild summer transfer Rangers rumours, we can finally start Discussing things, people, is there's a wee coal in the fire that's continually heating up, heating up, heating up. And not only is it the first potential signing of a rebuild, people, it is the first signing in a very long time to increase and improve a position on the back that we have badly, badly needed for too long. And that is the goalkeeper position. So without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and discuss the big Rangers link, the hot Rangers rumour right now that Rangers are closing in and signing Jack Butland. That's right, people. We're actually linked with a goalkeeper, a position we've needed strengthened for donkeys, people. And what's better is, right off the bat, he doesn't need a bus pass. So that is a promising sign for this football club if the man is to come up the actual road. But as always, right here on the channel, if there is a little bit of smoke behind the fire, we discuss it right here on the channel. We don't just speak about the rumour, which we'll break down later on in today's video. We actually speak about the player and whether or not this rumour ends up being true, let's actually see if it should be by kicking the tyres and seeing exactly what Jack Butlin is now and what he could bring to this football club. And I know it's a bit cheeky because we've just started off the old video, but again, just a friendly reminder as it does always help the actual videos out now the way YouTube works. If you didn't mind hitting the like button or the subscribe button, if you are new around here, we're trying to reach 60k, so any help would be greatly, greatly appreciated. And whilst you guys hopefully do that or wait to see if I've earned either one, which is fair, fair enough, we're going to dive right in to the old player profile and start off with some information regarding the potential new sign-in at this football club, Mr. Jack Butland and it's a name that we should all be familiar with if I'm honest with you on one hand there might be a lot of you re recognising that name and being familiar with that name because of the hype that was behind the lad very early on in his career the way he sort of exploded onto the scene talked up to be the next heir to the old English goalkeeping throne if you will and then there'll be a certain part of today's audience that's very familiar with Jack Butland because of a certain FIFA 30, 17 ultimate team card that was absolutely broken and made everyone absolutely raging. Listen, I'm not getting into it, people, but aye, regarding the actual football and the real things, Jack Butlin is a six foot five goalie, people, a big keeper, by God, it must actually be Christmas, and I'm not one to sound boring here or bore anyone who's actually watching, but if you googled modern day goalkeeper, you'd probably see a picture of Jack Butlin like this, or potentially like this. He's a big, big laddie who throws himself about and throws himself at every single cross that comes in, slapping Superman punches for everywhere to varying levels of success, and we'll speak about that very soon, but when he's actually at his best and when he's on his game, he's a big, imposing goalie who, again, is quick off his line, can close the gap, can spread himself very big, and again, is handy with the old ball at his feet if needed. The old classics in the old modern day goalkeeping sense and that's all you can really talk about in terms of goalie you know what I mean because I'm not going to sit here and talk about oh he's right footed he's left footed he, he likes to bring it down this like we do with our normal player profiles it's a goalie ladies and gentlemen who is commanded and again throws himself amongst crosses and just gets on the end of things two things that we have been badly badly deprived of for far too long especially for coming out and just attacking crosses again it's not always worked out for a lad and he has had some blunders but the fact that he actually goes there out there and throws it rather than letting a ball drop in the six yard box is a massive improvement in my personal opinion. But that's enough talking around the big man. Let's get a wee bit deeper and let's actually get into the story. Let's really get to the meat and tatties of today's video and paint the picture on how we could potentially be signing a player like Jack Butland on a free transfer when a free transfer wasn't on too many people's lips a couple years ago regarding this young man and starting off with the old numbers and stats let's look at his most recent season of football if you will as we always do in the videos and I it won't take us too long people because he's made approximately zero appearances for Manchester United this season after joining them on loan to cover David De Gea after Wayne Henderson obviously went uh, Dean Henderson sorry went to Nottingham Forest yes people zero appearances 
And to be fair to the lad, he can't blame him too much for not getting much game time at Manchester United because they've got a pretty decent goalie there, David De Gea. You've probably heard a wee bit about him, but he has actually been listed as being injured for parts of the season. But it's very interesting when you look at it, and I started getting lost in almost a rabbit hole because if you look at it, Manchester United's goalies all get listed as injured, and when they miss games or they didn't play, they get listed as injured. And Tom Heaton, for instance, who's the third goalie, if you will, or possibly second because he's played twice, this season is also listed as injured for unknown reasons. So is the fourth choice goalie. So I don't know what's going on with Manchester United. Maybe they just call everybody who doesn't make an 18 injured. But aye, it was very, very strange to look at. But of course, we're not going to learn anything if we find out the fact that he's played zero games for Manchester United this season. So aye, we're not going to learn too much from that. So let's pull it to the year before then, shall we? Because that's his most recent experience of playing week in and week out at the old highest level. And for Crystal Palace, he played 15 times in total during that season, conceded 18 goals and keeping three clean sheets. One of those clean sheets being on a fantastic FA Cup run that he was a major part in helping Crystal Palace make it all the way to the semi-finals where they played Chelsea and narrowly lost 2-0 in the actual game. A game you can expect Jack Bolton to have been pretty busy but he was an important piece in that puzzle to help them all the way to a magical FA Cup run that just unfortunately didn't end the way they were all hoping. But addressing the old elephant in the room people, he's not played too much football over the last couple of seasons. Again, 15 games in two seasons especially, doesn't he shout out to you the world class or anything like that and again you can't be too critical of not playing for Manchester United when they got David De Gea. He's just off the back of a player of the year, potential season, etc, etc. So I'm not going to look at him too much, but there is a bit of a story and there is a wee bit of a story that you need to add on for Jack Butland because a lot of you maybe have heard the name and are going to be very surprised that he's not played too much football over the last couple seasons. And you even go back full on that. It's pretty much three seasons since he was a, a nailed-on starter. Three full years before he was a nailed-on starter, which again, will probably say surprised a lot of people that's maybe heard the name saw the praise early on and just expected the laddie to be playing week in and week out but it's not quite happened and I want to go all the way back to 2016 because I think it was an important time during Jack Butland's career because that is when he was at the peak of his powers if you will, that is when he was the golden boy, that's when the press loved him, that's when they wanted him and expected him to be the next again heir to the English throne if you actually will and he picked up a very serious injury for England against Germany hurting his ankle and there was a lot of fears he was going to miss the rest of the season up to that point but he didn't just miss three months with that ankle injury no 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 he actually missed an entire year of football as he had two separate surgeries and two separate setbacks as it took the lad a long time to get back on the old football park and for me, I wouldn't say the injury ruined him or anything like that, so didn't panic on that fact and didn't hit your, your panic button and say, wait a minute, see, do you talk about a boy missing a year of football here? Have we signed another boy whose favourite TV show is casual? Eh, well, I'll put a hold on that because... Danny Panic, after he did come back, he went ahead and played back to back full season. So he's got football under his belt. But where I didn't, uh, where, where I say, sorry, the injury didn't ruin him or set him back in terms of that aspect, where it did, I think, affect him is when he was out for so long, again, he was so used to getting so much praise and expected to be this and expected to be that. Everything was going all his way. And what happened, what always happens with young English players or English players, the media finds new favourites when guys get injured. And he was no longer the one that was getting spoken about. He was no longer the media's favourite. They all moved on and then he ended up coming back. And I think that was uh, an timely adjustment where he lost a lot of confidence. Not only, again, not being the media's favourite, but also the way the team was gone when he ended up coming back. After missing a few years, Stoke started to nosedive, and when he came back into the squad, he played an entire season in the Premier League. They actually ended up getting relegated that season, where, again, I wouldn't be too critical on the laddie, because I think he actually had a very good season that year, and at least gave them an opportunity to potentially stay up. That's some of his best football, trying to cling in there. But, again, it wasn't a Stoke side that was performing at a level or playing well. It was a Stoke side where he was standing in there like a firing squad and needing to save left right and centre every single game and then the next again season he ended up playing 45 times in the old championship where again 
Stoke struggled. Instead of battling right back up, they languished about mid-table. And again, I think that affected his confidence in his own ability, people, as he started to look a little bit of a shadow of himself and not as commanding or as confident as he used to play. And again, we talked about the relegation. Some people say, I can't believe we're signing a boy in a free transfer that's been relegated recently, blah, blah, blah. Can I remind you, when we got Alan McGregor back for Hull, he was a free agent who had just... A free agent, sorry, who had just won the player of the year so you can actually play well as a goalie and still get relegated we've seen it last time and if Butland does a couple years like the way McGregor did in his first couple I'll be very very delighted but I did feel that was important to mention because I just think the time out injured coming back where Stoke started to nosedive the way that team started to really fall apart losing big piece after big piece after big piece all played its part in him losing his way and that eventually ended up leaving Stoke and going to Crystal Palace where again it never quite worked out as Roy Hodgson wasn't there too long that was obviously a big admirer of Jack and it never quite worked out as Patrick Vieira came in only gave him games here or there and it just started to stutter and again a lack of confidence was a major reason in my opinion but if you look at his last couple of years when he has played at the top level he's not really had blunders I know there's a compilation video out there in the 2020 season where again he had a couple bad moments but let's be honest between me and thee we could make a Quentin Tarantino epic on the amount of mistakes our goalies and defenders have made in just the last three games so a two minute clip of a guy's entire season isn't he doing it for me too bad we've seen enough blunders and all our fan favourites could have a blunder compilation easily if we wanted to go down that route. But of course, we're supposed to be here for numbers and stats, not story time We CJ. So let's get to the numbers. At the age of just 30 years old, which is incredibly young for a goalie, especially when you look at Rangers goalkeeping situation, he's played a total of 299 games in all competitions, both for club and for country. During those games, he's picked up 81 clean sheets as well, including five and nine English appearances. So he's got a bit of pedigree and he's got a pretty impressive a record when you actually go ahead and look at it especially in the old goalkeeping position and some of the teams that he's actually played it. And I'll be honest with you people, this has been a real interesting player profile to actually break down and it's been an interesting couple of days looking in to Jack Butland if I'm honest because there's obviously something there, the lad he made his England debut at 19 people, you didn't do that if you're a bad player and again his career was sort of derailed because of a serious injury and when he came back again the team was absolutely on its knees and gutted of all its quality players and he tried to hang in there, he tried to do his best and I think that knocked his actual confidence and I think confidence is a major thing for Jack Butland and I think the teams that he's been playing in haven't been to his standard in my personal opinion or where he expects to be because before he was injured he was linked with the Liverpools and all that and he was expected to go ahead and win things and it's never ever worked out. Some of his best football has been at Crystal Palace when they were playing at their best, taking them and helping them on the way to a semi-final. So it will be very interesting if he does come up the road right here. I think we could see the actual best and maybe a wee bit of old flashback Butland, if you will, because he'll be playing in a team that's expected to win games. Again, not to cling on, not to hang in, not to be relegation fodder, to actually be where he probably feels he should be at a team that's expected to win things so it might be exactly what that laddie needs and again it might be exactly what we need because if we get him anywhere near to where he can be in terms of his peak of his powers by god he will win us points next season he and he will win us games they say good goalies when you turn 15 points a season if we get him anywhere near his level that's the minimum he could bring our way and but again, a lot of that's ifs and maybes. There's obviously some worries. There's obviously some dread. And there will be some people that's not feeling this transfer. And that is fine. And that is fair enough. All I can tell you is my opinion for looking into the laddie. If we get him to where he can be, it would be an incredible signing for this football club. It's all just about that fit and to see if he feels he can get back to being who he is. Because he's not had bad games for Crystal Palace. You look at him in the Premier League. Some of the saves he's made, saving penalties versus Brighton, diving, oh, the shot, making wonder save versus uh, Grohl for Brighton and that as well. He's had moments, so it's not as if you have to go back five, six years for him playing well, but he's just not had that fit where he's been backed and been allowed to play week in and week out and week in and week out to get his confidence and, more important, consistency back. So, aye, that's all I've really got to say regarding Jack Butlin himself. Regarding the competition for places, I'm not going to waste anyone's time. We need 
a goal in. Again, if we get him to even 50% of what he can be at his very best, it'll be a lot better than what we've had over the last 16 months. And that is very sad for me to say. But again, I think he'll will, he will fix a lot of problems we've had coming out and just throwing himself. Sometimes he's a bit reckless with his throw-ins, but the way goalkeepers are now protected and everything like that, he'll probably win a foul every single time, especially up here with the amount of goalies that fall air and win everything against us. If we've got a goalie that's starting to come out and do that, we might win some cheap free kicks and not allow balls to drop on the old six-yard box. So, aye, if he comes here, for me, he's the best goalie at the club and that shouldn't be a surprise to absolutely anyone. And lastly, regarding the rumour itself, do I believe it to be true? Do I think there's anything in this? Yes, people, I do believe this to be true. That's why I wanted to bring it to you. And you might have noticed there's a lot of information in today's video. So I've spent the last little while on this video. So, aye, I do definitely think there is some uh, fire where this smoke is actually going, people. So what do you think about Jack Butler? Now I've given you a little bit of more information or tried to paint the picture of Jack Butler himself. What's happened over the last couple of years? Can we get him to the best? Absolutely. Very good goalie that needs to find consistent game time and that could bring him back to his absolute best. But what do you think down in the old comment section below? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on Jack Butler, the Rangers rumour. Do you believe it to be true? Do you want it? to be true, and until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I've been CJ Nova92, thank you so much for watching, all the best, and bye bye